it's costing you too much to let your job do the investing for you. So what's going on people? Welcome back to the channel, man. So today we're talking about uh, some important things, man. We're talking about the importance of investing your hard earned money and really taking that ownership and that responsibility back into your own hands. Because truthfully, that's what's gonna move the needle for you financially, okay? And get you to that freedom goal that we all want. So today I'm gonna to start off with a, a little story, man. I'm gonna give you a little story um, about a conversation I had with a gentleman, <clears throat> a little bit older than myself. Um, this was a while back now. He was in his late 50s. And we got talking about pensions and obviously he'd been working at a job for a very long time, a couple of decades. And um, we'll just talk about pensions. And he asked me some advice because he was a bit clueless on the whole pension situation. And he didn't really understand that pension money was invested money as well. So obviously we had a, we had a great conversation. And at the start of the conversation, he was very transparent. He let me know kind of the numbers that were in his pension. And he also, he let me know he had a bunch of different pensions around, okay? So we got onto the conversation of kind of tying all those pensions up into one place. So it made his life a bit easier. So he was, he was open to the, to, the, to the idea of that and he was happy for me to help him in that process. But in doing that and him being transparent, now I'm not gonna put his business out there and let, let everybody know about what kind of money he had in there, but the, the reason I'm telling you this story is because this is what's happening and what will happen to many of you out there who work um, for businesses and work a nine to five and work for a company for a very long time or plan to stay there for a long time. And at the end of your retirement, when you come to, you know, kind of uh, living off that pension, it may not be, and it likely won't be, the amount that you possibly predicted or expected. And the reason is because this particular gentleman, we got looking into his um, pension and his statements and kind of the annual performance. And obviously he got over the hurdle understanding finally that the money he had been accumulating and putting into this pension pot for a number of, number of years uh, had been invested into the stock market. And before that he was none the wiser and really opened his, opened his eyes up to the reality of what's actually happened with your money is um was powerful and and i seen that he was interested and it was important that we had that conversation so when we started looking at that though we started seeing some immediate discrepancies well i, I highlighted some discrepancies and it worked out that over the course of his pension contributions invested money in the market it had worked out that his hard-earned money had only been growing at a three and a half percent annual rate and that's worrying for many reasons because the first reason um we know that inflation um is completely destroying us right now and it's way above that three and a half percent and if your pension is not beating inflation, then what's the point in having a pension? Because by the time it comes to that age of retirement where you no longer can work anymore, you physically can't get a job and work for money anymore. If you haven't got enough in your retirement savings to live off, then eventually you will run out of money. That's just simple maths. Now, the second reason that's alarming because we said his money was only growing at a three and a half percent rate annually but what i failed to mention to you is that that was exempt of fees so if you didn't know any pension you're part of any workplace pension any private pension there would always be some kind of associated fees kind of admin fees for them let's say managing your money and those fees are you know, very malleable, different platforms will charge different prices. And I don't know the exact, fee, I can't remember the exact fee he was getting charged, but if your money's only growing at a three and a half percent rate, that's, that's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be enough for you. Like, let's just, let's just cut the cake as it is. 
let's not sugarcoat it that will not if that continues to grow at that rate and again looking at his history of his pension that's what the average return was and the thing is that it's 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 frustrating but i understand it because it's a business and being brutally honest your job your workplace your pension even the government it's not their responsibility to make you rich or make you financially um resilient in any shape way or form um now if you may disagree with me on that but that's just the brutal honesty it's it's not their responsibility the responsibility is in your hands and that's why we're really talking about this today and i'm trying to break down this concept that we need to really take it seriously and take that ownership back into our own two hands because there's no one on the on this planet earth that's going to think more about your money than you um that's just the way it is so yeah man so let's get into it today that's what we're going to break down i thought i'd share that story with you because it was an important one and i think a lot of people are in that boat um a lot of people at that nearing that retirement age and i think it's important to highlight that your pension is a great wealth building tool if you position it correctly okay and if you if you start making those adjustments that are crucial to really put you on the path of having that sustainability in those later years in life so look man so today we're going to talk firstly about why it's important uh, obviously we touched on a little bit with that with that with that story but also it's important because like we said before it, it no one no one's gonna no one no one's job to make you rich it's no one's job to make you and your family rich uh, or even financially comfortable that's your job individually and it's important because invested money is the streamlined way to build your net worth it's not saving it's not keeping money under your mattress it's not working more jobs it's not working more hours investing eliminates that investing puts you in position investing allows your money to be the slave and not you be the slave and going to work and trading time for the money investing your hard-earned money is putting your money in position to go out there into the marketplace and bring back more money and accumulate over time that's what investing does and while saving is important i'm not discrediting that um, and saving is super important but saving saving is just that it just saves and it saves you from a financial pitfall that may occur in life but it can't do much more than that and to put it more simple in think of it in the game of football the saver is just the goalkeeper now the goalkeeper is crucial like we said without a goalkeeper you know we, we can't really effectively play a game of football but the goalkeeper's there to prevent those balls hitting the back of the net those financial bullets hitting the back of the net that's what a goalkeeper's for you don't often see goalkeepers scoring 30 goals in a season but investing your money investing your money is even more crucial because that's how you win the game investing your money is like the striker the striker the person who's attacking putting the goals in the back of the opposition's net that's crucial that's how you win games that's how you win championships that's how you win trophies so it's the same way with your money think of it as any sport the attacking part of that sport the domineering part of that sport you need that crucial element to go bag you those goals to go run that score scoreboard up it's super important and of course yes like we said savings important as well but it just does that it just saves you that's all it can do that's all it will do but investing man that's why it's so important to really put your hard and money in position to go invest to go strike for you and bag those goals so hopefully that makes some sense for you guys man so the next part i want to talk about is important as well i want to talk about a lot of the misconceptions and demystify some of those myths out there which people not necessarily spread out there in the marketplace but a lot of people try to attach to these and really really marry these objections why they're getting into the game and it's important that we demystify those man and people will the first thing people will say is that they find that investing is too risky and these usually are the people that are on the sidelines that haven't invested before and they're on the fence and they're listening to a lot of this online stuff and from an outside uneducated view 
I can empathize with you. It may look risky because you don't really know what direction to take, who to listen to, and I understand that, I get that. But again, being brutally honest with you, the riskiest thing you can do towards your financial futures is doing nothing. That's the riskiest thing, is putting your financial future to chance to put it in someone else's hands and hope that they put you in position. That's not a winning strategy, man. That is not a winning strategy you need to subscribe to. And you need to toss hope out the window. Throw it completely out of your whole mental mainframe because all hope does is hinder our potential every day. That's all hope is. So I need you to unsubscribe from that. Unsubscribe from the idea that risk is the thing holding you back because like we said the riskiest thing is you not making any moves that's the riskiest thing you can do so that's the biggest misconception i really want to knock out of the park um, and also the second one is that people think that they need loads of money to start with to get into the game but the really and truly to get big money out of the market you need to start with a small amount yes of course Obvious maths tells you that a bigger pile to start with will get you to a faster accumulation goal. I, I, I get that, that's understandable, but you don't need to start with a lot of money. I didn't start with a lot of money. A lot of people I'm helping in this community did not start with a lot of money. I started in the stock market with 60 pounds. That's what I did start with. So you don't need a huge amount to get started. You just need to arm yourself with the education, be committed to the education and double down and understand that over time, incrementally, you will get further and closer to where you need to get to, okay? And also the last one I don't want to leave out is that a lot of people, again, I've had this question, I've had this conversation with many people who are older than myself, maybe, again, maybe half a decade or a decade off what seems to be retirement age and they're kind of always objectifying about, is it too late for me? You know, I feel like I've missed the boat. And again, that's just not the, the reality. It may feel like that, but the reality is not that, okay? And also, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do something with you. I wanna actually show you um, more than tell you that it's not the worst case scenario and it's not too late for someone who is of a later age to get into this game of investing and anything you wanna do in life, man. So look, so today I've got a, I wanna show you something. So today, we're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit different today, okay? So obviously this is a simple tape measure. So today we got okay, we're gonna start from there. Okay, so look, so this two ends I've got right now. So here we're starting at one, and my finger here is on about number 76, okay? Now Ash, why is it on number 76? So number 76 represents the average age of someone living in the UK. You know, if you're lucky, you'll get to this age, and if you get anything past that age, you're in bonus round, okay? So the average age of men and women in the UK stands around about 76 last time I looked, okay? If you take myself now, I'm 33. What am I 34? Can't remember, 33. So, from there to there, that's the life I've lived so far. So if you're any good at maths, unlike myself, I'm not very good. It shows that I've probably, I've lived just a little under half of my expected life on this planet, okay? Which is quite scary. And it's important that you understand this and you don't actually get that much time in this world. And again, like I said, if you get past this number of 76, you're in the bonus round and you're doing amazing. You're better than the average. So it's important that you can see age 33 to here. What I can do from here to here is down to me. And also I can do so much in that time. Now, a lot of you older, of course, depending on where you are, you know, you may be, you may be 55 
and there's still that gap there, okay? That gap there, you get to decide still what you want to do. You get to decide how far you go financially, okay? No matter where you are on this tape measure, if you are, you know, a young buck and you're 21, look how amazing that is. Look how much time you will get from the age of 21 up to, like we said, that 76. Look at that runway you've got. Look at that financial runway. So when people say, oh, it's too late, it's too late. Yeah, okay, you may have missed many years, but you're not past that 76 yet. You haven't hit your checkpoint yet. So don't get bogged down and waste time on the time you've missed. Yes, it was amazing to invest 20 years ago. That was probably the best time. But the second best time is just right now. Get into the game right now. Start doubling down. Use the time you have left on the tape measure to take you where you need to go, man. So that's important. So just forget those misconceptions, you know. Forget the risk. Forget the idea of you need loads of money. And start where you are, no matter what age you are. Don't get bogged down on those objections, man, because ultimately that will hold you back from where you need to go financially. So look. We've spoke about a few things. Now we're gonna get into the practical elements. We need some actual steps, some stuff you can really take away with, man. And it's leading on the last point of, you know, using and utilizing that time length that you've got left, man. And the, the, back, the, the back home message I really wanna to get to you guys is that you need to start now. You need to start committing to the idea of changing your future rather than leaving it to chance because remember hope's not a strategy we don't want to hinder our potential every day we want to put ourselves in the best position possible to financially flourish for our futures man that's some alliteration right there man so you know that's that's what we need to do okay so the actionable steps i need you to do okay if you you know if you, these this is mainly for the you know kind of beginners people who aren't in the investing game so what you need first and foremost is an investment account, of course. Now, you can do this two different ways. Uh, one way is to simply go into your workplace pension, obviously getting the details from them. That is still invested money, so you can get all the details and really take ownership of where you wanna put your money into that. The next step is setting up a separate brokerage account, okay? Setting up an account. I'm not gonna go into all the accounts out there. I've got different videos on that kind of stuff. Go check those out. But to set up an account, man, it doesn't really matter too much what account it is, just get into the game. Don't get, you know, all bogged down and start procrastinating about what account to start with. Just set one up, make sure it works for you, check their fees, talk to them, speak to the customer service. If you're happy with that, set it up, get going, man. And where I would start and where I started was I kept it simple. Like I said, we built the knowledge, built the education, but I started in the game not trying to find the needle in the haystack, not trying to find that amazing stock that's gonna get me 200% return. It looked for that needle in the haystack. I just bought the whole haystack. And the way I did that, and the way you can do that, is just buying something called ETFs, which just stands for Exchange Traded Funds. And again, this video is not about breaking down what Exchange Traded Funds are, but essentially they're just a bunch of stocks usually the best performing stocks in the stock market, they bundle them all together and they put them into a fund and you just pay one price and you get exposure to all those stocks, okay? Now, if you want a more in-depth breakdown on that, check out other videos on the channel. We go into uh, different concepts about ETFs and all that kind of stuff, but that's a great place to start, okay? That's an amazing place to start. Just ETFs, because what ETFs do is they allow you to earn while you still learn and that's powerful man especially when you're a beginner and that's what was powerful for me because i was my money was making money in the background i wouldn't i don't have to really think about it with the etfs it kind of automates my investing for me all i've got to do is buy the fund every month every week however much i want to buy it and all the fund takes care of all the investment side of things for me and if a company's doing terrible in that fund the fund just kicks it out and it replaces with a better one automatically. So that's why they're super powerful because I was earning money in the background. I was kind of automating my investments, but also 
I was learning about the game. I was educating myself even more. You know, I was reading my Investor Chronicles, you know, reading my stock books, and I was learning about the game and familiarizing myself with the terms, the rules to the game. And my money was just working in the background. And that was amazing, man. I found that, I found that was great for me. It was powerful. And it just allowed me to really double down in an area which I wanted to get better at and learn the stock market, man. So that's what you can do, and that's very practical, very actionable, which you can start with today. And then once you're doing all that, once you've got all that running, the last thing really you need to do is just be consistent with it. And be consistent with the investing side, be consistent with adding to your account every week, every month, whatever works for you, and be consistent with your learning. Be consistent with and committing to your learning, and that's what's truly gonna move the needle for you, man, and really separate you from being good to great. That's the deciding factor, man. It's not about how smart you are because I'm not a particularly academically smart dude. Um, for reference, I only got about five C's in my GCSEs, just about scraped through. But I understood that if I educate myself daily and just double down in areas which I want to master, it's inevitable, man. I'm going to get great at that, okay? So hopefully today, guys, we broke down some great concepts for you to help you understand that the power is in you, the power is in you. You know, all you need to do is really decide and you know, bring forward that commitment to bring back that responsibility into your own hands to move that financial needle for yourself and also for your families going forward, man. So it's important that we take that ownership back, understand why it's important to invest. And I think we um, can all agree that it can be done. You know, the steps are there in front of us, the education's there, all the resources are available to us, man. We just gotta really wake up and be committed to where we want to go financially, man. Because I always say, you need to change for what you say you want, or you need to change what you want, okay? If you've got any value from this video, please share it out, share it with somebody that may get some value from it, share it out with somebody that is potentially on the fence about getting invested, man, and they just don't know what direction to go. Shoot them over a message, have a conversation about the video, man, drop me a comment, thumbs up, anything you liked about the video, please share it out. And also, if you want that further education, and for my readers, I've just dropped a downloadable ebook in the bio, go check it out, man, we simplify the stock market. So take advantage of that, man, run it up, Thank you again for your time, appreciate you, and we'll see you guys in that next video, man. Let's go.